everything, comes in some brackets. Brackets, the cooler itself. Anyway, it's probably double the size of the one I've got right now from the factory, so that should be good enough for this little truck. Comes with the hose, brackets, adapters, nuts, bolts, screws, I think just about everything you need. Now I've got a different one on my Bronco. Alright, so let's take a look at the Bronco here because it has a slightly different, uh, I don't know whether it's a different manufacturer or what, but a just a, a slightly uh, bigger cooler. This is, this is the transmission cooler here. This is Ford factory. Let's see here, get out of the sun. Yeah, this is the transmission cooler, Ford factory cooler from 1995. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. I don't know what it's made out of, but it seems to be at least over an inch thick. You know, this way. I think they call this a plate and fin type cooler. So over here I got another cooler. This this is aftermarket. This is on the engine oil. This keeps my engine oil cool. Can you dig it? Yeah. So same similar design except it doesn't have those little zigzag thingies in there. Um mm-hmm. Yeah, but this is to keep the engine cool, the engine oil cool. And I don't see any name brand on here or anything. This one here is, yeah, the same width bottom. I don't know you can see inside there. Slightly different. So, in comparison, here's the B&M. It's only about mm, three quarters of an inch thick. Yeah, th those are a lot thicker. Overall dimensions are about the same. Now, why engine oil cooler? Well, if you live in a cold climate, you're probably not going to need an engine oil cooler, but out here in Southern California, we got a pretty warm climate. So I figure why not? This might be important. <laughs> Where'd this come from? Um, yeah. Now, years ago, I read uh, in Carcraft Magazine, this is like when I was back in high school, that you can make your engine last twice as long by running an engine oil cooler. Now, is that true or not? I have no idea. But we're going to find out. I figure it's not going to hurt. Now, you can get these for cold climates. Um, but they do recommend a thermostat control on the oil because if it's too cold, I mean, too cold is just as bad as too hot. Okay, some of you may be wondering, well, why not put an engine oil cooler on this Tacoma? Well, I could and I may sometime in the future. And it'd be pretty easy on this truck because the engine oil lines are right there on the filter. So yeah. See the engine oil lines? So all I'd have to do is cut a hose in there, run it to the front, and put another cooler in there. In line. So, this is similar to what I've got on the Ford, except mine screws onto the uh, existing filter mount, and it has the hose connections on there. Then your filter goes on top of that. It's kind of like a sandwich uh, adapter. Homer Simpson would say, mmm, sandwich. Uh, some of you might be wondering, what, a, what, what do I mean, too cold? How could the engine oil be too cold? Well, <clears throat> don't you just use thinner oil? No, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the engine oil temperature getting up to Getting up to temperature, you know, off the top of my head, I forget what the engine oil has to get up to, temperature-wise, but it has to get up to a certain temperature 
to vaporize any fuel or moisture that's in the oil. Because you know when you start your engine cold, the block is cold, everything's cold, the metal's cold, and condensation will form as it's warming up. Second thing is the pistons are going up and down, you're gonna get little fuel bypass or products of combustion, I don't know what you want to call it. You know, that's why your oil is black. Your oil turns black from all that stuff. That contaminates your oil. So any fuel that bypasses the piston rings has to be burned up somehow. So it's got to get up to temperature in the crankcase. Your whole engine's got to get up to a certain temperature so everything vaporizes. And then it gets sucked into the PVC valve somewhere here, into the intake, and gets burned in the combustion chamber. So if you don't let your engine oil get warm enough or up to temperature, we'll get condensation forming and I've heard of a few people wonder why there's white stuff inside their their oil cap. That's probably from condensation. That's my theory anyway, especially if you live in a cold cold climate we got mild temperatures here, so. But yeah, that's why if you do put an engine oil cooler and you live in a cold climate, you might want to get the thermostat control on it so it bypasses the cooler, because during the cold winter months, you probably won't need a cooler, only in the summertime. Yeah. Otherwise, your oil will never get hot enough to vaporize the contaminants in the oil. That's what I'm talking about. All right, morning. Sunday morning. Sunny Sunday morning. Nice and warm out here. I would have liked to have gone somewhere, but I got caught up in this in this uh, cooler install here. You know, B and M. Almost done. I did my oil change, engine oil and put the cooler in kind of late because I had to work yesterday so I didn't get a full day to work on this but this is where the cooler is going on this side I decided on this side after all because that gives me room to run the hoses over and cut the filter in and the filter is going to go right there see that this is uh, for holding an electrical conduit. And there was already a hole there, and that was to hold a, uh, the factory cooler. So I used the bolt that was there to mount that on there. And this will go in there like that, tighten that up, and that'll hold that flow. Uh, so one hose will go over to the bottom under here. The other hose will come out and go back to point of connection which is over here see see that one like that there's the factory cooler so I'll pop these hoses off here and here yeah and kit comes with the new hose that's neat that's cool so I don't have to go get any I hope I better check before I um do this because Once I remove that, once I remove that, I won't be able to go anywhere if I don't have enough hose. Well, I got up this morning. First thing I want to do is finish this cooler. So, I got it all hooked up. What I really need is a cup of coffee. Hmm. Yeah. Get a nice big cup of coffee get me going. Because I'm running kind of slow. But, uh, yeah, there you go. I need to cut these things still, but I think they'll be okay like that for right now. Comes with these, comes with nuts, washers, screws. Um, what I didn't have was enough hose clamps. Okay, so that's, I don't kind of like that. See how much it flexes? I just have to keep an eye on that every time I do the oil change, make sure everything's secure. Ran my uh, return hose up here, fit perfect. It's nice, smooth. There's nothing 
to cut the hose so that'll hold the hose there and I got one of these little uh, steel clamps with a rubber a rubber thingy on it yeah Let's see can you see it yeah and that'll secure this hose from flopping around and it goes back to the engine I mean back to the transmission now I use the factory clamps only because I didn't have enough of the new clamps like these I actually needed six of these and all I had was four and this one just was messed up it wouldn't something screwed up on it so well they just want to fight me so for right now I put the factory clamps back uh, they should be okay if they're okay they're, they'll be all right I guess so anyway, here's the transmission out, out, yeah, out of the transmission, the hot oil comes through, goes through my filter, filter's nice and secure there, solid, like that, another factory clamp in the hose, goes up, into the transmission, into the cooler, and it goes across the cooler, gets the wind blowing through there, cool it off, and it goes back through, back through the bottom. One thirty. One twenty-five. One twenty-five. 130. So there's a five degree difference between the inlet side and the outlet side right now. And there's not a lot of airflow since I'm standing still. So let's see how much airflow I got through this cooler right now while I'm idling. Yeah, you see, I do have some airflow. That's just from the fan. So when you're driving around, you've got a lot more airflow through here. So right now I'm getting about a five degree drop in uh, temperature. Should be more while I'm driving around. More airflow. Okay, all done with that. Test drove and everything. Uh, it may need a little more trans fluid, but I'll check that later on. Quiet. Also, I'm going to. Uh, I think I'll put that filter in there for a week, and I'll change it out with a new one. This way, it gets to clean out whatever's in there, right? And we'll start fresh. If you know what I mean. Yeah. And then I'll leave the other one in there for 15,000 miles. It says it'll change them every 30, but it's awful small filter. Just how much dirt can that small filter hold? Anyway, yeah, so that's what's up with that. It's all back together. Got the Bronco running back there. Giving it its once a week warm up just to keep everything circulating the oil and all that stuff you know what I mean charge the battery 